Okay, hello to my overview of Pixelborn slash just kind of Lorcana in general. The goal of this video is not to show you how to get Pixelborn up and running, but rather to show you just kind of like what to do once you get in here. So, you know, you have this very basic screen and I'm going to go over kind of like what all the colors do and some examples of popular deck lists. It's certainly not going to be comprehensive because... Nobody knows, you know, what 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 the meta is going to be. It's been developing very quickly so far. But um, so really, I just think the best thing to do is for me to just play a game, and I'll show you how, how Lorcana works in general. Um, I'm queuing up just like a very basic red-green evasive aggro deck that I like, <clears throat> and I think that'll be a good example to show you uh, kind of how the game works and how Pixelborn has done a very good job at uh, simulating the game in a way that I think that is fun and fluid. It's not perfect by any means, but they did a very admirable job, I think. And uh, it's a great way to play, experience the game for free, for, for my tastes anyway. So you have a very um, Hearthstone-like mulligan, and this is not a very good hand. <clears throat> I mean, it's okay. Uh, a very important concept to go over right away is that your cards are your mana and so anytime you see a card with this like swirly yellow thing going on at the top left where their cost is that means you can play the card face down into your ink well as a mana which i will show you in a second um so generally a, a rule of thumb is that you don't want uninkable cards so these two on the left kuzco and mother knows best are example of uninkable cards uh you oh i took too long ha <laughs> that's fine um so I'm going first. Tigger costs six mana, so I'm not going to be able to play him for a while. So I, I take him, drag him over to this inkwell, and he will he's revealed to my opponent, and then he goes face down over here, and now he's a mana. I don't have a one drop, so I can't play anything yet. <clears throat> but that's just kind of how the mana system works. Uh, you really, cards in hand are resources, uh, more so than any other card game I've ever played. Uh, and the win condition is not to kill your opponent, but rather to gain 20 lore. And the way that you're gaining lore is by... Eh, I'll keep I'll keep pan. Um, questing with your characters. So I'm going to put Cruella de Vil out here. <clears throat> and generally your characters are going to be doing one of two things. They're either questing to gain their lore value, which is represented by these diamonds over here. Or they're challenging an exerted character that your opponent has. <clears throat> so when you quest, which I my opponent's about to do with Captain Hook, I imagine he might not. We'll see. They will be exerted, which is represented in Pixel Born by them being kind of like turned diagonally and black and white. Okay, so we quested. <clears throat> so that, in this case, I could challenge Captain Hook with Cruella Deville. And then it's just like, you know, typical card game stuff. You do your attack value to their health and vice versa. So in this case, it's not really necessarily that good of a trade. And Cruella de Vil is a character that particularly you want them to be challenging Cruella. So I'm going to quest with her for sure. And you see Pixelborn represents it with these feet footprints stepping over here for some reason. Um... Another handy thing to keep in mind, if you hover this, it shows you your the maximum amount of lore the each player could be questing for, which is very handy in late game scenarios when there's a lot of stuff on the board. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and ink Cruella so I can play Peter Pan here. <clears throat> Just getting stuff out. Um, a pretty common mechanic that's actually very powerful and is on a lot of cards is a, uh, a song card. And a character with cost three or more can tap to sing this song for free. And there are a bunch of these songs. So, you know, someone like Peter Pan, who costs three, could sing this song for me. But not, not the turn that I play it, because there's summoning sickness and whatnot. So, We'll see what my opponent does here. Yeah, that's a pretty clean trade for them, but that's okay. <clears throat> I can return it to his hand. I might as well. Uh, I have a really bad hand because I took too long and I turned to Mulligan. <laughs> like, I should not have this or Cusco in hand, but that's okay. 
So my opponent's playing a steel purple deck, which is going to be very controly. Lots of card draw and removal. Just generally annoying stuff going on. Uh, so this is an interesting turn. I only have two inkable cards in hand. And I want to ink a card to play the other one. Which means I don't have any way of getting more mana next turn. But that's still probably worth it. So I guess I will ink the cat to play Pongo. Uh, the goal of the deck that I'm playing right now is to abuse the evasive keyword. Uh, only characters with evasive can challenge this. Which means it's pretty much free questing. But since my opponent is playing steel as one of his colors. That means he has some good removal in his deck. And he might have answers. The purple color that they are playing is generally for, like, card draw and stuff. You see, there you go. There's the smash coming out. Gets rid of the pongo, which is pretty painful. <clears throat> but that's alright. If I can, if I draw an inkable card and get Kuzco down next turn, then we're really rolling. Uh, there, there are cards where just the amount of lore that you're getting when you quest with them is, is pretty significant. And that really tends to be... Uh, something powerful that you deck build around. So Cusco is one of the best cards in the game for my money. And he has Ward. So it's very annoying for a Steel deck to remove this. And and even if they manage to challenge and banish it, I can banish what they killed him with. So he And he's questing for three the whole time. So he's like kind of the core of this deck. I still would not have kept him in Mulligan though. So what can you do? If I can get Genie down on, on next turn, that'll be extremely good for me. And I'll have just this monstrous evasive board that it's going to be very hard for them to remove. They're not playing red, which tends to be the color that has the best removal for gigantic evasives and stuff. So, <clears throat> it'll be tough on them. This is probably a pretty decent matchup for me, even when I skip Mulligan like a doofus. <clears throat> but they have a ton of cards in hand still, so... I mean, that's just kind of how purple tends to play. I don't see this card very much, but he's pretty decent. Ooh, nice. Okay. So here comes Genie. We are really rolling. When you play this character, you may return chosen character to their player's hand. So I just want to reset their ha their Hans for sure. Very annoying for them. And we quest and we quest. To quest with your characters, you have to hover them for a second. And then this little button shows up. Uh... But it's it's pretty intuitive. I don't know how else the you would you would code that. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay. So he's in a pretty nasty rush challenger. Uh, there aren't that many cards with rush, but it is a powerful keyword for sure. When you play the card, you can challenge the same turn that you play it. And uh, that tends to be on cards that see play. Zeus hasn't really seen that much play, but as you saw just there, I mean, it was pretty good for getting rid of my extremely dangerous three lore unit. <clears throat> so we are in top deck mode, which is not that uncommon, but I'm gaining three lore a turn, and it's so hard for him to answer these cards, so... And he they're not challenging me with anything scary nor are they generating that much lore so i think i'm just kind of holding on this turn <clears throat> i could have played the duke of weaselton but i'm just gonna hold out and see what's going on in the next couple turns here i don't necessarily know what they are ramping up to as their top end they probably have big tinkerbell and these are the these are cards that I'll show after this game ends. I just I just wanted to play one game just to kind of show how the UI works, how the the game flows. Up until as of now, there are no ways to interact on your opponent's turn. For some people, that's a downside. Uh, for me, that's just great. I love that. Uh, so there's no weird timing or checking to see if <coughs> you know whatever. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just start plopping stuff, and I'm going to send Hans back to his hand again. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to sing it with Genie. Optionally, I could have played it for free with Genie by tapping him, but uh, we need the lore, so that's that's the plan. 
out of cards. <clears throat> Just aggro deck things. If you don't like running out of cards, there are definitely options in Lorcana for decks that do not run out of cards. But I just like playing cringy, evasive stuff. Okay, I, I do not see people play this very much. There are cool tech options. Like, there's a card called Beast in the Steel uh, color that... Oh, that's great. Another kind of annoy, annoying evasive. Um, so we're pretty much in race mode. Uh, I do not care about his cards. I'm just questing as much as I can. It's, it's really just different. You have to rewire your thinking from other card games. What I'm doing is smorking my opponent right now, but it doesn't really look that way. Ooh, okay, so there's a powerful, like, uh, AoE spell that the steel color has. Oh, nice. Got rid of the genie. Okay. So I do not have lethal now. I can only quest for three. <clears throat> Oh, man, so, and he removes the Tinkerbell, too. Yeah, grab your swords definitely is the uh, the kind of card that swings these matchups. So this might be a loss, but that's fine. I screwed up the mulligan so bad that it's just like this happens. I could still pull it out if I draw another beefy evasive. <clears throat> like, I think I have, like, Goofy and Tigger in this deck, which are really big. Oh, that stinks. Um, all right. So it was probably an L, but I got to show off the the way that the game works. And it looks like we're not going to be in a drawn-out 30-minute control mirror or something, which is not what I wanted for this video. Yeah, so here's one of the best cards in the game for sure. That's just a lot of text. Shift is a very powerful mechanic to talk about, and it makes you reassess so many different cards in the game. Uh, there are other Tinkerbells. There's one in my deck, in fact, in the green color. Um, and this lets you just, like, ramp out really big units, and you get to act on the same turn, which is extremely powerful. Um, and this does an AoE, and when it kills in a challenge, you deal two damage to a character, so that card just does all kinds of crazy nonsense. <clears throat> Steel is definitely one of the more represented colors that I see played. I think people just really like having removal and stuff in their decks. Alright, yeah, this guy destroyed me, so let's just get out of here. <clears throat> well played. If I could emote them, I would. <clears throat> okay. So, let's just go over the colors now, and then I'll show off some of the, the typical decks that you might see. The, like, kind of collection screen UI in this is not the best, but it's functional when you're building a deck there are websites that you can use that are quite a bit more fluid i think for deck building but this is fine for now so the yellow color and i have no idea why cerberus is hanging out up here <laughs> the yellow color in this game is definitely like the zoo color you're definitely flooding the board with really powerful cheap units for example lilo is one of the best aggro one drops in the game and this is an interesting example on how to teach you how lorcana works because at first glance this does not look impressive at all it's a one mana one one you can't even ink it but the reason it's powerful is because it quests for two lore so you get it on the board if it quests even once that's one tenth of your way to the win condition which is 20 lore and you pair that with extremely powerful stuff in this color like simba which has the bodyguard keyword so essentially anytime you have a bodyguard that's exerted your opponent has to challenge the bodyguards before they can challenge anything else so a very typical one two curve that you'll see is Lilo into Simba, and Simba protects the Lilo, and you just keep trying to tap for two lore every turn. Other stuff that's in yellow is stuff like resurrection type things. You get a character card from your discard with Hades. Pretty cool stuff. There's like a song thing going on in yellow. This aerial card um, looks at the top four cards of your deck, and if there's a song there, you can add it to your hand. Um, the songs that are in this color tend to be okay. The best one for sure is Be Our Guest, which you can sing for two. 
look at the top four cards of your deck and get a, any character card. Decks in Lorcana tend to be strong majority characters. So, in general, if you're playing yellow, you're running Be Our Guest. Uh, there's other stuff in here, like Stitch the Rockstar. He can shift for four, and when you play a two or less cost character, you can exert them to draw a card, which is great. And he quests for three. This is a powerful card that you, you know, you run with your just typical little one drop, two, two, Stitch, and you try to shift at some point during the game. Rapunzel is another really powerful card in this color. She heals up to three, and you draw a card for each each point of damage that you healed good stuff so the yellow is a pretty good color that you'll see maximus is a very good bodyguard unit kind of beefy good stat line uh i haven't played a ton of yellow because it's it's not my favorite brand of aggro in this game as of right now but it is a, a respectable color purple i would say is the most common uh, because general, it just has good cards, essentially. You have one of the best top-end cards with the, the Spirit of Winter, Elsa. She can shift for six, but sometimes you play her without even any other Elsas. And she just exerts two of your opponent's characters, and they don't ready up. She quests for three, she's got good stats. Um, you have this, like, Magic Broom with Sorcerer Mickey package that's really fun. Uh, this is just a good card. Makes your brooms cheaper, and whenever a broom is banished in a challenge, it comes back to your hand, so you kind of have some, like, infinite value thing going on, because the brooms bring stuff from your discard into your deck. Uh, there's actually relatively decent mill decks in this game, so having this sort of package actually can stop you from decking out. Um, Ma Sorceress Maleficent's just one of the best cards in the game. Three mana, two, two. She she's inkable, and when you play her, you draw a card. There's not a whole lot of draw in Lorcana, actually. So anytime you see draw, it just tends to be a card that people fit into decks. Uh, Dr. Facilier's just like a good two drop, and he shifts into a pretty nasty card. Whenever one of your other characters is banished in a challenge, it comes back to your hand. Quests for three. Um, yeah, and purple also has good aggro cards. Maleficent is an equivalent to Lilo and orange or yellow. I kind of go back and forth on how I describe that color. Anyway, just a one mana one one that quests for two. That's just powerful. Pascal is an excellent one drop because he has evasive whenever you own another character, which makes it very hard to remove this thing. And then you have Rafiki, just one of the best like anti-aggro options in the game currently. He's just a 3-mana three 3-3 three, with Rush, which tends to clear just about anything that is played before it. This is frequently an answer to like Simba and stuff like that. Uh, the Queen, just a fantastic, like beefy unit that draws cards. It's so annoying to have to beat this thing because you wanna you wanna kill it so they're not constantly drawing cards, but 4-5 is actually enormous in this game. Um, Ursula, pretty powerful top end, and then got some great items and spells. Friends on the other side is a song for, like, this thing could get nerfed even. it's It looks like arcane intellect, but just with how Lorcana works, this is actually just incredible. I've even seen Befuddle see some play. It's just a great way to slow down aggro. Magic Mirror is incredible. You have to pay four and tap this for, for card draw, but just in practice it's more powerful than it sounds just trust me on that one so purple's incredible you'll see a lot of purple if you play Lorcana. <clears throat> green is also quite good so in general i would say green leans into having low stat minions but really good questing values like flynn rider is an incredible two drop that quests for two and when your opponent challenges it they have to discard a card from their hand which is just nightmarish on Lorcana. Um, you, you really, you'll see this a lot in aggro decks. <clears throat> Cruella de Vil's quite good. Hans, just a vanilla 4-mana 3-3, three, three, but questing for 3 is just a billion. And you'll, you'll see this a lot as well. Genie, I played in the game just, just a little bit ago. Pretty strong card. Um, lots of really just annoying stuff. Like, whenever your character's quest, it does annoying stuff. Like, John Silver makes it so you're... And have chosen opposing, opposing character as gains Reckless, which means they can't quest and they have to attack. 
which is a great disruptive option. Jasper has some kind of similar thing going on where a chosen opposing character can't quest. It's not as good as giving Reckless, but, you know. Uh, Kuzco, we went over. Just a great, nasty five drop. Mad Hatter, another one. Quests for three. Whenever this character is challenged, you may draw a card. Incredible stuff. Um, yeah, just good cards in green. That It's definitely got a lot of just, like, you play these and you try to quest with them stuff going on. There's, like, a little bit of stuff with, like, whenever you play an action going on in this color, but I don't really see those used. Um, that feels like an undercooked part of the color to me, but, you know, it's all right. And then the spells in this class are okay you mostly will see like mother knows best to return chosen character to their player's hand just like a good slow them down option most of these though i do not see played and from my experience and i've looked at a lot of lorcana deck lists kind of obsessively recently so the red color is another extremely common one you'll see it paired with like purple that's kind of like the premier deck right now um it definitely does not carry over from mtg where red is like the aggro burn damage color in this game red is actually kind of like the late game color uh just so many absolutely monstrous beefy expensive units like aladdin uh whenever he banishes another character in a challenge you gain two lore and each opponent loses two lore it's that's just it's just a nightmare when this comes into play and you can shift for five and there's a pretty good three drop aladdin that you can run um, you got good stuff like LeFou. When you play this, ready chosen character, they can't quest for the rest of this turn, but they can challenge, or you can just leave them readied so that your your opponent cannot challenge them on the following turn, which comes into play a lot. Four of LeFou goes into quite a few decks. And then you have, like, the, the premier top end, Maleficent's just absolutely monstrous. It, it's just an unconditional removal, huge stats, quest for two. And it's inkable, which is so important. So, you know, it, it might seem crazy, but you'll see four of Maleficent, four of Brave Little Taylor Mickeys, four of Aladdins, and so many decks. Because the, the risk of running them is actually incredibly low. Uh, Maui is just incredible. One of my favorite cards. Rush Reckless with 6-5 stats and he's inkable. He's just incredible for, like, taking back board control in the mid-game. Uh, Brave Little Taylor Mickey, as far as I know, is the only quest for four unit in the game right now. And he has evasive. Like There there are situations where you just get this down and you're just going to win in a couple turns. It's pretty much just over. Um, great evasive units in this color. Uh, and the spells. like They got really the two best removal spells in the game, which is Dragonfire, just unconditional, you're dead. <coughs> and be prepared which is the only kill everything that exists and you can sing it which is situational but you would be surprised because when you sing this you cast it for free and then you just refill the board because you still have all your mana it's absolutely nutty uh so red is one of the best colors for sure blue on the other hand is i would say is the color that i see the least there's cool stuff going on in here uh, mostly, I would say the most powerful thing going on in here is their ramp. So, Grandma Tala kind of acts as ramp. You play her, when she dies, she goes into your inkwell. Uh, Detective Mickey, <clears throat> when you play him, you just put the top card of your deck into your inkwell. And then they have extremely cool items like Fishbone Quill. You can put any card from your hand into your inkwell. So, you can use this as a way to ink otherwise uninkable cards which can definitely be a powerful thing so and you know great spell develop your brain look at top two cards keep one uh there's not not much like kind of thin your deck stuff like that going on but other than that the blue color is kind of lacking i think there are good cards here like hades is a very good it's just a big unit quest for two remove something essentially into your opponent's ink well um some cards that don't look that impressive on first glance, but are actually pretty good. It's just like the five drop Maleficent, quest for three, really beefy stat line. Uh, Robin Hood is quite good. He can take out evasives, and sometimes he draws you a card. And a archetype that I have not personally explored much, but I have seen some others hype up is like an item 
archetype where this guy quests for plus one lore for each item you have in play so in theory you know he could quest for six or something wild and whenever you play him you can return an item from your discard to your hand so he's really good at kind of like recycling your items that you've played before that seems like a little bit of a copium deck to me but it's really cool and worth it worth exploring for sure so blue is not one that you will see the most but it's it's definitely not hopeless and the mana ramp stuff makes it have a, a niche for sure and then finally the steel color which i guess gray i don't know very very powerful color so they just have excellent challenger units captain hook basically hits for three for one mana uh beast is one of the best tech cards in the game when you play this character you may banish chosen item there are very powerful items in this game like beast mirror uh the mirror in purple uh, if you're up against blue, you can eat their fishbone or something. There's there's quite a few items that see play. And then you have other stuff in this color, like Prince Eric, one of the premier two drops for sure. Two mana, one three, challenger plus two, very powerful. Uh, and you see stuff like Tinkerbell into Big Tink, Giant Fairy Tinkerbell, I went over while I was playing that game. Just incredibly strong. And then the, the spells in this color are where it gets... It, especially fantastic smash is just a staple grab your swords you you saw in the game that i played how this absolutely soloed me pretty much uh f even fire the cannon see some play and then a whole new world basically creates an entire deck this is how you mill people <clears throat> uh when you're building a lorcana deck the minimum is 60 cards but you can go above that so it's not too hard to build a mill deck where you're just trying to draw a whole new world, dump your hand, play this, make your opponent deck out, and you win. Uh, so gray is pretty straightforward. It's just like good removal and some some really annoying units with challenge and stuff like that. So in terms of actual specific decks, uh, pretty much the baseline that you want to start to look at is the red-purple control archetype. <clears throat> So this deck's just trying to play some good, cheap, early units to stabilize. You got the Magic Broom with uh, Sorcerer Mickey package, which you pretty much just always play in purple. You play your Maleficent for card draw, and she's just good. You play your Rafiki just so you can stabilize early. You got your card draw with friends on the other side. You play the Magic Mirror. And then from the red color, which is where... You know, a lot of the beefy power and questing is coming from. <clears throat> you also get your incredible removal. You get the the only real board wipe that exists. And you have your outrageous top end with Mickey, Aladdin, Maleficent, four of just all of those. Because you can ink them, so there's just no risk. I mean, that's that's a very interesting thing about Lorcana. Um, and then over in the purple, you, you know, you still have the queen. Just all the card draw good board control and then elsa as even more top end that just makes you absolutely unstoppable if you get to a point where <clears throat> your opponent didn't smork you by questing super fast you just win if if it goes long enough with this deck other archetypes that i would say i tried to represent each color uh this is definitely a good example of just like yellow green kind of zoo aggro essentially you got the lilo you got the Simba. That's what you're looking for early. Or you play, you know, just your one mana two twos. Start getting some questing done. Flynn Rider, absolutely fantastic card. Cheshire Cat, extremely annoying card. It's a 0-3, but when your opponent banishes it with a challenge, you banish the challenging character. So it can be however much attack needed to kill whatever killed this. Uh, annoying stuff like Hans, just this stupid, he comes down and gets three lore, which is a gazillion. Same with Kuzco, Mad Hatter, quests for a billion and draws you cards. You know, just good stuff. Hades <coughs> keeps the cards flowing back into your hand. Rapunzel, absolutely crazy card. Maximus, fantastic bodyguard and support. Like, this this deck is really strong. And it's, it's straightforward to play, and you'll win with... I, I don't know if I've ever lost with this. Um, other stuff that you'll see... This is an example of kind of how to build ramp for my tastes. There are plenty of other takes on ramp. 
but in blue it's really just develop your brain good good one mana like look for a card kind of thing fishbone to try and ramp mickey mouse to try and ramp and then some good top end stuff hades is good removal robin hood does good stuff i love the five drop maleficent i just like the art and that she quests for three <coughs> And you pair it with red because red is insane. You have your Aladdin, Mickey, Maleficent, be prepared, top end, and you just go kill people. Um, and I'll show off kind of a steel, like anti aggro take, where you have your grab your swords, your Tinkerbells. You always want some beasts. Even if your opponent's not playing items, you just ink this. It's fine. That's, that's why this is such a good card because it's inkable uh mini tinkerbell she can either draw cards and has a good stat line but it, she's really good just to to shift and then you have your captain hook prince eric smash you know just these are kind of the the really solid steel you can pair this with with whatever color you want pretty much but uh you can pick purple because purple's insane <clears throat> and that's just an example of decks kind of decks that you'll see this is the evasive deck that i played uh, it's not going for the crazy top end with red that I was showing off, but it plays just kind of good units. It tries to get a lot of out of the evasives. Um, Goofy is a strong evasive. Like, 5 mana, 3, 4 evasive is just really hard for decks to kill. It's above the smash breakpoint, which is typically the, the most common removal that you see. Kind of same with Tigger. And that in green... You know, you're just playing green because it has the great questing cards. Like I was talking about, Flynn Rider. You just play him and you quest with him and you don't even think about it. Same with Cheshire Cat. Same with Hans. Same with Kuzco. You just play the cards and you quest them. So that seems like a pretty good summary, I think. About 30 minutes. Um, yeah, Lorcana's awesome. And Pixelborn is a very good way to, to play it for free and to explore the possibilities uh i will have a link to their discord in the description which is going to be a great resource for you if you want to get started setting this up and beyond that uh i think we're good to go here so thanks for watching i'll see you guys later